So I know that the conversation about privilege is a hard one to have because you live in a capitalist society where you're told you've got to work for everything, be a part of this rat race, and for you to win, someone lazier than you has to lose. You've all got the same 24 hours. <laughs> right, to get out there and do some work. So if it's going to ease this conversation somewhat, I am now on stage prepared to discuss some aspects of black privilege. Would you like that? Well, it don't fucking exist. How dare you? Not shy, lady. I laid the trap. You sprung it. Did you see that shit? <laughs> Sorry, mysterious racist in the shadows. I'll set you up there. Uh, <laughs> I did set you up there. It's fine. I'll talk about one black advantage I might have that a white dude might not have. Some of you may have noticed, I have less hair on my head now than I do in my posters. <laughs> Some of you are like, yeah, Damon, if you're doing all right, why don't you just go to Turkey and get a hair transplant? I'm not getting a hair transplant for the same reason I don't eat vegan cheese, Kate. The technology is not there yet. <laughs> but that being said, when you're a black person, if you go bald, you can still look kind of cool. There's a lot of icons that I'll have bald heads, like Mo Farah, he looks cool bald, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, even my idol Dave Chappelle. Nice and bald and shiny. Not all white men have that privilege. If you're a white man and you are not Captain Picard from Star Trek or Professor Xavier, going bald can be tough because people assume that you're old, racist, very sick, or Grant or Phil Mitchell. Did you not notice when Jason Staten went bald, he started doing Fast and Furious movies, just so he can go, my racist, look at all these black and brown people I'm in a film with. <laughs> just to cover his back. Yeah. Now, I bring up the privilege thing because, you know, I've had a fortunate career. I can't complain too much about it. But there are whispers in the entertainment community as to how Dane became successful. People out there being like, oh, Dane's only on TV because they are ticking boxes. Dane only gets work to fill quotas. Dane's just a token black guy. Why is that? Well, because some of these people are jealous and racist, but it's also because mainstream media doesn't show you a lot of black success stories. So when people see it, they think something dodgy has happened. Even other black people don't trust black success because they're so used to being oppressed, people will say, he's a member of a secret society. He's done a blood sacrifice. <laughs> He's using symbolism. Let me tell you, after spending 10 years in entertainment, there is no Illuminati or blood sacrifice. I have a list of people I will happily kill to make more money and no one seems to care. It's so crazy though, that people would assume that I have privilege in a world of reality TV. Cause let's be honest, in this country alone, you can be working class and white, you can be middle class and white and get on a reality show with no discernible talent and become a millionaire for walking around in the bikini. You can become a millionaire like Gemma Collins by scratching your vagina on national television and making your gay friends smell it. So you're not having it that bad if we're honest. Not only that, on the subject of reality TV, I discovered a white woman called Stephanie Motta from the United States. And she was on a reality TV show. When she left the show, she decided to open an OnlyFans account. And in this OnlyFans account, she was selling her farts in a jar <laughs> and sending those to subscribers. Now you may laugh, but she made a hundred grand in one month. <laughs> so money was so good, she started eating all of the foods that give you flatulence in order to make more money and ended up having a heart attack from farting too hard. <laughs> I am sorry. Middle class white women in the room, if you can sell farts in a jar, you have the second most privilege in Western civilization. <laughs> Who has the first? The white men that will buy in farts in a jar. <laughs> now I know there's some white men in here being like, we weren't all buying farts in a jar. There must have been some Asian guys. No Asian man is buying farts in a jar when there's curry at the, in the fridge at his mama's house. He can get farts on tap whenever he wants. And no black person is buying farts in a jar when they can have macaroni cheese or condensed milk or Guinness punch. We can fart on tap if needs be. No one's paying for that shit. It's crazy. So that's right, when it comes to privilege, I don't think I have much apart from, you know, 
maybe remaining dignified and going bald. But that's also a problem, because I'm not the only black bald comedian in this industry. And I gotta tell you this, because I've been confused for all of them. <laughs> and that's something that, you know, my white contemporaries don't deal with mistaken identity. And that's happened to me a lot. Tell you guys a story, back in 2014, I was the first black British person in all of Edinburgh's history to be nominated for an award. Not bragging, just saying. Thank you very much. Thank you. I tell you this because I have a great friend who's also bald and black, and everybody thought he was me. You might laugh, but he got free drinks and he even got a threesome because they thought he was me. What the fuck are you laughing at? I want a threesome. I earned that shit. Tell you another story. I was doing a panel show on a TV station I'm not allowed to reveal for legal reasons. Well, it rhymes with ITV schmoo. Are you happy? Anyway. They asked me to approve some pictures for promo and sent me pictures of the comedian Richard Blackwood. True story. Now, Richard is an icon, inspiration, but he is older than me by about 10 years and he has hair. So I kicked up a little stink and the person that sent them to me, they got fired. And people on Twitter were like, oh, I think you've gone a bit too far, mate. You've got a chip on your shoulder. Everyone makes mistakes. I'm sorry, there is no fucking excuse. You know why? One reason, Google. <laughs> you can just Google what the fuck I look like. We can't still be confusing black people in a world with 1,080 megapixel TV screens and 4K screens. You're telling me we can see the surface of Mars, but you're still confusing black skin? Shut the fuck up, please. No excuse. The other reason why I'm not having any white person confuse me for another bald black comedian is because white people have pets. And when your pets go missing, you get missing posters. And you put those posters up all over the city on trees and lampposts, and people who have never met your fucking pet in their entire lives are supposed to be able to find your pet. They're like, excuse me, have you seen Sprinkles? He's a black cat with a white dot on his paw. Can you help? I don't fucking know. I never pay that much attention to cats. Also, if I find your cat, how do I verify its identity? Excuse me, are you Sprinkles? <laughs> Meow. Oh, that's what all the cats said. <laughs> Why won't the cat community cooperate with law enforcement? <laughs> do you guys see when uh, Kurt Zuma got in loads of trouble for kicking a cat? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, some of you don't like that. Some of you who are a bit darker are like, well, you know. <laughs> now, this is my thing. I know that pets are important in Western civilization. I like dogs, I like cats. Well, I wanna just demonstrate something to you guys. Cause everyone got very upset about that. Much more upset than they do about the constant, constant viral videos of innocent black people being killed by police. And I say this because some of you have cats. Uh, make some noise if you got a cat. All right, that makes noise you got a dog? Yeah, now, you sound equally happy, but the people with cats need to understand your cats don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> Miss, you had a cat? You got a cat? And a dog. And a dog. Yeah, because you know one of them's not giving you enough love. So, <laughs> what's your cat's name? Biscuit. Biscuit. <laughs> what a cute name. You think Biscuit gives a fuck about where you are right now? Probably not, yeah. Which is interesting because, you know, we have a society that we're like, I'm not too sure we can have any more immigrants. But when it comes to cats, people are like, yeah, let them in. I love you, cat. The cat's like, what the fuck ever? <laughs> cats don't give a fuck about people, you know. You know how I know? When you drive on a motorway or on a dark stretch of road, they put little reflectors on that road so you can see better, so you won't crash. And they're called cat eyes because we know cats see very well. But let me ask you all a question. When's the last time you saw a cat leading around a blind person? <laughs> exactly. Dogs do it all the time because dogs are loyal and they love people. Dogs love people so much that if you're even homeless, 
you can still have a dog. You can be like, you know, times are tough right now there, boy. We might have to sleep rough for a couple of days. It's gonna be cold out there. And that dog will be like, that's okay, buddy. I'm with you to the end. If you're cold, I'm cold. But I'll keep you warm with my fur. Cause I love you, because we're best friends. You try and tell Biscuit that she's got nowhere to live. How long do you think she's gonna stick around for? Not long. You know why? Cause cats don't even consider your home their home. It's their home and you live there. Cause even when you give a cat a home and some food, they'll still go to other people's houses for food. And be like, yeah, this food is delicious, not like that pussy or at home. <laughs> Cause that's who cats are. See, even like those people, make some noise you got a dog again. Now, nah, make some noise if your dog likes going for a walk. Yeah, dogs love walks. Even dogs who don't understand any other commands, you'd be like, you wanna go for a walk? That dog would be like, are you serious? That's why you're my best fucking friend. You wait right there. I'm gonna go and get the leash because I can't wait to be out in the great outdoors with my best friend. I fucking love you, buddy. You ever try taking Biscuit for a walk? When you see a human trying to walk a cat, they to behave the same way that you would do if you're trying to bring an ugly person home from a nightclub. Like, I hope no one I love sees me. I'm gonna start drinking and doing drugs. I've got a theory about this as well, you know. I believe, now some of you may know this, cats in ancient Kemet or ancient nowadays Egypt, cats were like nigh on deities. They were considered like gods. You even have like cat headed gods like Sakmet and Bastet. Like even in Black Panther, they worship Bastet, who is a cat-headed god. And I don't think cats have forgotten that they are special people from Africa and people should respect that shit. And it's crazy because when cats act like that, everyone's like, I fucking love cats. But if we act that way, people are like, you guys are going way too hard, man. Can't you calm down and be so aggressive, black people, or blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Which is fucked up because I've never stabbed anybody. Anyone here ever been scratched by a cat? <laughs> Exactly. But yeah, I know it's a difficult conversation to have. One of the reasons why addressing racism is so hard is because who knows who to blame for this stuff? There's not one clear person. Even nowadays, I've never seen white people so divided. Left, right, alt-left, super-left, liberal. It's going crazy. I mean, to most of us, it's still all white. But nowadays, on social media, there's white people that don't like being called white. And these might be the people I now have a problem with. Because there was a time where if you were a person of color, you knew what a racist looked like. Like, even when we close our eyes and we think about a typical racist, you imagine a bald guy with tattoos that are going green, and he only drinks at Irish pubs in Spain. <laughs> and he starts every conversation with you like, I'm not being funny, but, <laughs> right? That's what we think a racist looks like. But the thing is, this has been deliberately created to make you think that white working class people are the ones that have the power to oppress you, which is not true because they're almost equally oppressed. You go past Birmingham, you'll see how working class white people live. It's not great. But this whole idea has been suggested that these people are responsible for racism when really the most they can be responsible for is racial rhetoric. They can say stuff to you, but they can't make it happen. Like, working class white people might tell you to go back to where you came from, but it's the middle class white people in government that orchestrated the Windrush scandal. And the same middle class people that have only compensated 4% of those victims. So you need to know who your real enemy is. In the same way that working class white people might accuse you as a black person for ha having a gun. But make no mistake, it's the middle class people in government that are the reason why you are seven times more likely to be stopped and searched as a black person and the people that leave out the fact that the reason why guns or handguns are illegal in this country is because a pedophile called Thomas Hamilton walked into a school in Dunblane and killed innocent children. It's got nothing to do with black people. Sorry guys, so fuck Operation Trident. You know why? Because black people have only made one gun. A man called Lonnie Johnson invented the super soaker and the Nerf system. <laughs> Which means if it was down to black people, when you got shot, it would only leave you soft and wet. Just the way we like it, fellas, all right. Ridiculous. I gotta bring this up because like I said, 
This is still the conversation, this idea that only poor white people are racist. When really, we have a real new issue, which are liberals. Liberals have created this oppression Olympics and they're very subversive because when someone is overt and racist, you can see that because they'll be like, oh, what, black people? Whereas liberals are kind of like, oh, what black people? <laughs> and you guys can see the difference. You know, you'll hear liberal people say things like, well, you know, violence doesn't solve anything. Um, if you check how much your country spends on fucking defense budgets, you can see it really does work, actually. You know, it's even when people say stuff like, you know, I only eat plant-based food. Well, you should be happy that you get to choose what you eat every fucking day. Because not everyone in the world has that privilege. And I say this because whenever you broach the conversation of oppression with so-called liberals, they go, there's no need to shout. I don't need all that aggression. And can I just say, speaking as a person of color, we don't like that word anymore because we know what it really means, especially me. You know why, a couple years back, I did Countdown. Not bragging, just saying. <laughs> but I worked something out. When you are accused of aggression as a black person, because if you rearrange the letters in the word aggression, it actually spells, <gasps> a nigga, S-O-S. So, <laughs> when you accuse us of aggression, I know what you really mean. Because I've been watching it for a long time, and I've been watching people from different parts of dominant culture passing this hot potato of racial hatred. You know, a lot of comedians, when I started doing comedy, would be like, oh, I love everybody. Racism, I don't even see color. Well, how are you working as an observational comedian if you can't fucking see color? <laughs> and then they'll go on and say, I'm not racist, but my nan can be a little bit racist, suggesting as if because something happened in the old days, it's acceptable. I don't think that's the case. I think it was never acceptable. And if you really want to address the issue, kill your nan. <laughs> kill your fucking nan. I don't give a fuck. I'll boot your nan in a pussy on Christmas Day. You don't see color, I don't see age. How about that? <laughs> fuck that shit. Did that seem too angry to you? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll slap your nan's tits over her shoulder too. How about that? I think one of the problems is, is the fact that there was a time where people were told, as I said, that racism was acceptable. And that can be hard to change in the minds of people when they've been told generation after generation, this is the right way to behave. In the same way that for many years, we were told that smoking was a good thing. There was a time when even doctors would come on TV and tell you to smoke cigarettes. They'd be like, having a rough day, your wife won't shut the fuck up. That's women for you. See, it's not okay if it was in the old days, is it? Wife not shutting up, maybe give her a slap. And then, I'll say it's not acceptable because it was old days, that's what I fucking said. Now you slap her in the face and you have yourself a cigarette. But now, after years of education and research, we understand that cigarettes are bad for you and smoking is not good for you. And I want us as a society to address racism in the same way, to understand that if you continue to pass this on to generation after generation, it will eat away at you like cigarettes do, long term. But then I started thinking, could there be a device that would facilitate this? Because you know, if we're trying to quit smoking, it's hard to go cold turkey. It might be the same thing with racists and white supremacists. So I invented a device which I call a nicotine patch. And when you attach it, you can inject white supremacy into your bloodstream every half an hour. So instead of saying something out loud, you just feel superior to black people. And then we can get you designated racism areas like in the office. So you don't be racist indoors, but you can go outside in the corner and share that space with other bigots. You know, so that you don't infect the minds and bodies of young children. And then hopefully, like with smoke, you die of an aggressive form of cancer. <laughs> and that's gonna be poetic because then your lungs will be black. So that's okay. <laughs> Did that seem angry to you? 